Hi guys, I'm Dr. RJ Burr of Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center, and I am here today with Mr. Chris Eskin, which many of, many of our audience already know uh, as he used to be a coach over at Applied Fitness Solutions in Plymouth. Um, he recently took a job with Exos, um, working through the Henry Ford Healthcare System, integrating fitness into the corporate world, working, partnering with DTE. Now, did I get that right, Chris? Yeah, so uh, thank you for having me on, Doc. Yeah, for sure. So now that I got a little a warm introduction, well, would you mind elaborating a little more? Tell us what you're doing now. It seems pretty interesting that the healthcare system's integrating fitness now into the corporate world, something I'm interested in. Would you mind uh, sharing that with us? Yeah, so I mean, one of the big things you always hear about in like office spaces, in, in the corporate world, I shouldn't say office spaces, is just the high healthcare costs. And DTE, finally was starting to get smarter of like, all right, I'm paying a lot of money for our employees to go to the doctors. How much is it going to cost me to make sure they don't go to the doctors? Hence the, the partnership with the Henry Ford. Well, as you know, the Henry Ford is a healthcare system. It's not a, a physical training company. So they were able to integrate some preventive, med preventive measures into DTE and employee wellness. Right? We have an onsite doctor. We have onsite physical therapist, onsite, um, immunization, all that sort of stuff. And that's all well and good because it, caught, it saves the company a lot of money, but where's the preventive measures coming from? Well, that's where we come in. So we've been partnered with Henry Ford now for in the better part of five years in the Detroit area. And what we provide is that fitness aspect, right? The preventive measures before you go to the doctor, right? Everyone hears about that. Like you want to stay fit, you want to stay healthy so you don't go see the doctor. So that's how companies are starting to save, save that money, so to speak, um, because our, our cost is a lot cheaper than having what at headquarters alone, there's 4,000 employees at DT. So let's just take that population then having 4,000 people end up in the emergency room or end up getting some sort of like cardiac bypass, getting some sort of surgery, some form of me me uh, measurement or uh, medicine that they need to be taking on a more than regular basis. The cost of us was like a third. So like it was a no brainer decision for them to like, oh, you mean I'm gonna pay people a lot less or pay the company or like our insurance a lot less to have fitness in our building? You got it, like there's no way around it. For sure, I mean, it's, it sounds like it's actually true healthcare, right? It's preventative, taking care of yourself before it's a problem as opposed to, you know, our current healthcare model is more of a sick care model. It is, right? Yeah. Take care of it beforehand and have people understand healthy living and, and have those actions already in place and reduce the amount of sick care spending. Am I catching that right? Yeah. So, I mean, our, and there's, there's very little uh, preventative like barriers for getting in with us. Yeah. So they, they charge the employees $10 a month and they get access to coaches. They get access to classes, customized game plans. Um, and just all the guidance they need. Like we have a registered dietitian on staff that helps mm -hmm. them walk them through all their nutrition that they need. Oh, we awesome. have we have two certified coaches. We have two managers that are also in the exercise science field. So like the money that they're saving with using us, like they're being able, they're able to do whatever they need, and their employees are healthier for it. Yeah, that's absolutely huge. I love that. I mean. One of the biggest complaints I hear um, from my current patients, because as you know, I spend more time with people than typical than, than what they're used to, is that they yeah. go to see a physician in a healthcare system and they go there, you wait in the lobby for an hour or more because it's always behind. There's a ton of people in the lobby. You finally get in there, you see a nurse or someone else. And then when you finally see the physician, it's like for five minutes and they say, okay, well, here's this medication if you need it. Uh, you know, make sure you're eating whole foods and, uh, don't smoke and don't drink and blah, blah, blah. Like, all right, great. Everyone knows that, but there's no facilitator of that process. And that's the hardest part. And people, whether they know it or not, desperately need that guidance and facilitation because this is another story for a different time. But we don't learn this stuff really in our education system, right? Like no. We have so much arithmetic and English and, and history and all that stuff and all the metrics to pass tests, but we don't learn like how to deadlift, how to squat, uh, that we should move more often, the types of foods we really should be eating because really the food pyramid's not the best thing, if anything, if, if yeah. anything terrible. You know, I mean, some people have called it the death pyramid. Um, you know, like we just, we just have a lack of that stuff from the foundational level. So, you know, it's hard to change those things, but 
um, having a resource like you guys, that's huge because now you're a resource to actually get that guidance and facilitation of those things that people so desperately want and need and can't find. So, I mean, that's just, that's, it's, it's, I mean, I hate to like use big terms and all that, but I, it's, it's a, it's kind of a game changer, man. It's, it's a big deal. Oh yeah. It's huge. It's huge. And it's been an, ex an exciting process. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I love it. Okay. So now working with the population you're working with, I can't imagine everyone's like a high level athlete. You're kind of working more gen pop. Is that correct? Yep. So, I mean, it's, we work with a gen pop, but the, the nice thing is we, we kind of follow the idea that everyone's their own athlete. Yes. Right. We're all training for something, whether it be training to not, or be, be able to pick your kids up off the floor and play with them into your fifties and sixties, or like we do have some high level, like marathoners that we work with as well. Well, that's awesome. Okay. So that, I mean, you're right. I always say that everybody's an athlete. It's just what level of athlete are you? Right. So it looks exactly. like you're, you're getting that spectrum, um, which is great. So that way you <laughs> Um, scale accordingly it sounds like now yep let's let's take it to the more of the um, more recreational well, actually you can go across the gamut if you'd like but I'm thinking more recreational athletes the gen pop what's the most yep. common injury or complaint that you see and how could it be prevented I know it's a kind of a broad question but you know if you kind of had to narrow it down to one thing so it's it's it, it is a very broad question so I mean I work in an office space so it, it's the typical things that we get complaints about my hips hurt my back hurts, my shoulders hurt, and my neck hurts. So really just anything with the torso, that's where we're starting to see, see the issue. And it's, it's uh, yeah, that's my biggest complaint, no matter what. Like, yeah, I get complaints of like, oh, my knee hurts or my elbow hurts, but it's always, man, my low back's killing me. Oh, my upper back's killing me. My hips hurt. My shoulders are bad. So anything to do with that torso is, is where we're seeing a lot of our issues. Okay, gotcha. I, I mean – as you know, I see a lot of the same stuff too, right? We got our, our uh, desk jockeys, so to say. Um, yep. Oh, yeah. Again, this can be abroad as well, but how do you think that those problems could be prevented or mitigated? What's the best way to go about that? So the best way is to, at least in my opinion, from, from my experience as a coach through, you know, private sector and here is to train your body in multiple ways and put your body through various positions. So worry more about the position in what you're moving, not necessarily about the loads or, you know, am I doing enough bicep curls or bench press? It's like, am I able to like twist my body without hurting and not being afraid to put your body through those ranges of motions and positions um, and being able to train, not just sagittally, as we talk about, like being able to step to your left and step to your right, not just moving forward and backwards. Yeah. Right. The more, the more exposure you have to various movements, the, the more limber your body's going to feel, the more activation you're going to feel through your, your glutes and blah, blah, blah. And you're just going to feel better overall because you're able to put your body in these positions that you weren't able to before. Got it. Now, so it sounds like what you're saying is that it's movement variability, lots of different things, and then building that capacity to do it as well. Exactly. Yeah. So that's my long winded answer. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's yeah. No, there's another way to say it. Okay, cool. I love it. I mean, that's the same thing. Actually, it's funny. I have it sitting right here. I wrote it a while ago just to kind of keep it in my mind all the times. I think it's kind of backwards, but it says uh, variability and capacity, variability and capacity, right? Like we're so used to doing all the same crap all the damn time that if you don't use it, you lose it, right? We sort of get rust on the hinges. We're not we're not lubing up the joints and the bodies in all those different ways because we're such creatures of habit. And, um, you know, based on our society, our culture and our habits, we're not required to do as much. And now we have to actually have gyms and, and different places to ha create exercise where exercise used to be called work, you know, like back in the day, you had to move your body to work and make money and all that. Now exactly. I mean, eat and work and all that stuff, you can sit on your butt all day long and, you can, I mean, sooner or later, we're going to have drones drop shipping us uh, meals from Amazon or whatever, you know? Exactly. There's less and less to do, so we have to constantly find more ways to be active, and it's tough. So we're, it's kind of an uphill battle, but um, I love your, you guys are in the forefront of that uphill battle by teaching people like, hey, we're in a different world now. You can't just go to work and swing a sledgehammer. It's just not happening anymore. We're now, we're now swinging our fingers on keyboards more than ever, and especially with Zoom right? With all this and quarantine and everything else and, and gyms being closed, it's even harder than ever now. Like then people find it hard to do, you know, you can do push-ups and planks, but 
how long are you going to do that for if you don't have a program or someone to coach you, so on and so forth. It's just, it's become so hard for people to really know what to do and to have you guys as a resource is, is awesome. And then speaking yeah. of people working at home, you told me before we started this recording, you're doing some, some video recordings, uh, so workouts. Will you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, I mean, since quarantine, I'll be honest, like the only thing that changed about my job is I don't get to go to a beautiful gym every single day. My gym is my basement. And like, just to give you everyone an idea of what I'm working with, I work with three bands and a set of dumbbells. Right. Like that's all I have access to. So um, trust me when I say like, I understand where everyone's going, like what you're going through. Um, but know that there's always options to, to train around that. And that's what I've taught a lot of our members to do. Cause that was the biggest complaint that I received initially from our membership is like, how am I supposed to train? I don't have dumbbells. I don't have this. I don't have that. It's like, well, we'll find ways around it. So um, right now I think I teach and coach about 10 fitness classes a week. Yeah. That's all done virtually. So we are integrated with Microsoft teams and people just jump on. Like it's a typical meeting and everyone's sharing their cameras and they're getting coached through movement while getting a quality training session. That's awesome. Okay. And it, so it's, it's, um, you're kind of doing similar to, I guess what a lot of people gyms are doing is pivoting toward the online platform and you're yep. just doing what you already do with minimal equipment, but you're still able to get the same type of output or quality that you'd get. It's just, you're having to modify and pivot a little bit. Yep. Just a little bit. And it's, it, it, it's just a tiny bit, like a small little change in your mindset is what, is what helps help all of our members understand the value of still training. For sure. And I feel like some people still have that kind of um, mental block that, you know, uh, I can't really do it at home. I think a lot of people take it out, take it out of their own head, so to say, and they, they take it Yes. My bad. Sorry, there's a plane going overhead. I apologize, guys. No problem. All right. The, um, the, um, that once you finally do the, the virtual uh, class that you finally realize like, Hey, actually, you know what, we can do this and I'm still getting the results and the, the stimulus I'm looking for. And, you know, sometimes you just need to adapt. It's just not going to be normal. We're now in a new normal and that's just the way it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I love that you're doing the online workouts and a lot of people are open to doing that because otherwise I find some people that are not doing it and they're all saying like, Hey, I've put on this weight. I'm feeling like crap. So on and so forth. And they're really seeing like the value of exercise more than just physique. There's a lot more to it. Right. So the mental, yeah. emotional and physical side of it, um, it's, it's just profound. And, um, uh, I'm glad that we have platforms like this where we can have a little interview, but also we can do fitness classes. So of course, cool. Thanks for sharing. So now you may have already answered this in a previous question, but number one injury tip, uh, injury prevention tip for our audience. Oh, goodness. I have two, Doc. Is that, is that cool if I use the two? I'll, I'll give you two because I've known you okay. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. No problem. So, I mean, number one, with your exercise program, start thinking about movement patterns, not about muscles, right? So we want to make sure we're training the, the entire body. And there's a very, very famous quote out there. When we train muscle, movement's forgotten. When we train movement, muscles are never forgotten. So take this time right now to really think about just moving your body in different, different ways, right? Step to your left, step to your right, step forward, step backwards, twist over your right leg, twist over your left leg, reach for your right toe, reach for your left toe, like put your body in these weird positions to allow your body to become acclimated to, to these stressors to help keep your body limber, keep you safe. And that kind of leads into my second tip is to spend this time taking that step back in your training. So a lot of people I know personally have been like, I don't have gym equipment to work with. I can't do my deadlifts and my squats like I normally do. Well, like we talked about at the very beginning, everyone trains in sagittal. So they always train forward and backwards. Mm -hmm. Use this time to take that step back and evaluate your program and make sure you're moving in a direction to the left, moving to the right, moving backwards, twisting, rotating, bending extending and if you don't understand how to do that like reach out to a coach like I know I'm more than happy to help out anybody that reaches out to me um, but I know there's a lot of great people out there that really understand how to develop a good program and all you got to do is reach out to them. great okay so movement not muscles I absolutely love that one it's huge and it's another tough one it's people get stuck on the bodybuilding principles and once you switch over to movement um, it's just 
I don't know. It's just a different way of thinking that I've, once you go, you never go back. So well, yeah, it's, 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 oh, it's like, it's like they all that it says, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what's uh, what's number two? Number two, again, it's going to be that idea of taking that step back right now and like okay. using the time that we have during, during the, this, this quarantine to really evaluate, are you moving in these different patterns and start working on changing that mindset? Okay. So, right? so take a step back. Okay. So movement, not muscles take a step back, evaluate what you're doing and uh, be open-minded and broaden your horizon of what exercise is. Yeah. Cause all too often we, we get we trap these trap ourselves. And I've been guilty of this is trapping our clients in prehab purgatory <laughs> when all they need to do is just move, move, move and move some more. And you have the best weight system with you right now. It's called your body. Yep. If you can't move your body correctly. I don't care how much weight you can put on your back. You're, you're just going to end up in pain later. Yeah, totally. Well, thanks for sharing that. I love those. Those are great tips. Wonderful tips. Now, uh, lastly, now you're working with Exos. You're working with DTE. Now, if people want to work with you specifically, they really like what you're saying, you know, um, how do they reach out to you or can they even do that? Are you taking private clients? I'm not, but I'm always willing to help, right? So I'm always willing to sit down, have a conversation and at least – help people get on the right track and either refer them to people that I know that are taking on clients or, or whatnot. But I mean, let's, I mean, yeah, if you want to get a hold of me, I mean, my email uh, is going to be my full name, Christopher Eskin at gmail.com. And just shoot me a quick email. I mean, if you look me up on Instagram, it's going to be Eskin underscore fit or find me on Facebook. Like I've, again, I have no problem talking through and help you get set up on the right path. Cool. I love it. Okay, guys. So we've got Christopher Eskin at gmail.com. And then the Instagram handle again was Eskin fit Eskin right? underscore fit S at Eskin underscore fit. Any other platforms that you're on? And then Facebook, just search Chris Eskin. Okay, perfect. Be a giant baby in, a, in like a uh, Captain America onesie holding his fist up. So love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anything less. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, man. Hey, well, Chris, thanks again for hopping on here. Uh, wonderful information. You're always a wealth of information. Thank you for sharing it with our audience. And uh, I'll catch up with you soon, brother. Okay. I appreciate it, Doc. You take care, guys. Take care.